All right, right guys, five. this is happening. We're back for the first time in forever. <laughs> Just like that, uh, what was that song? Yeah, Frozen. Yeah, we're back for the first time in forever. My graphics artist was not able to make a seven-person overlay, so we're back in the Brady Bunch, you know, thing here. How to fill us in. What's it been, like? Two and a half, three months since we last were together. Damn it. So, yeah. yeah, it's been rough. It's been rough. But we're back. Back in the New York group. Uh, so, I'm having a fantastic time. This is my eighth broadcast this week, or maybe it's my ninth. It's somewhere. Whoa. Right there. It's high. Um, so, some things you should check out Stars Without Numbers. Uh, since the last time we broadcast, we started Mummy's Mask and Reign of Winter and Friday Night Fights, which is Worldwide Wrestling RPG. And I'm just going to post in the chat the form for my Wednesday night game. I'm trying to get people to do a game where we move through RPGs every four to six weeks, tabletop RPGs. If we get enough people, that'll start. It's going to be awesome. We'll just do, like, one story arc, one long-form story arc, and then move to the next system. So, yeah, that's what I got going on. Let's check in with everybody, starting with Steven. Steven, how the heck are you, man? I'm fine. Yeah, it's been forever. Everybody had everything to do and couldn't get back together. It seemed like this, uh, this could be the month. We can finish this up. Yeah, it could be the month. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your service, sir. Because I know thank you, you were uh, doing deployment training, right? Yes, I'm still doing that. But yeah, thanks. Do you remember your sword? I do. It talks to me. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> that apple pie thing, by the way, has spread from this campaign to other campaigns. So... <laughs> I wish we could have played the other day. It was actually uh, 314. <laughs> it was Pi Day. I know. <laughs> you got anything else going on? Not really. Can we Just... reintroduce your character? Because there are viewers tonight who have never seen this character before. Yes. So, Arubis is a Bladeborn Magus. His uh, his blade talks to him. He didn't know it was uh, it was his uh, I guess his his own blade until his uh, grandfather gave it to him. He leveled up and it started uh, talking to him. So ever since then, he uh, has been trying to I guess merge his fighting with uh, what his blade actually wants him to do, and I guess shock and grasp and uh, step up and kill stuff. Yeah, it's worked out for you pretty well so far. So far, yes. I even had to kill one of my teammates, but we got him back. It was just temporary. Temporary. He's yeah, just okay. a little bit. Merely a flesh wound. Bit. Yes. All right. Dom, I know we saw oh. you earlier today from Stars Without Numbers. How have you been since then, that four-hour period? I got me some Terra Tots. I watched some TV. Feeling pretty good. You watching Daredevil? Cause holy shit, man! Is I'm gonna watch good? that. Yeah. Later, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll probably it's watch it so tomorrow. So good. Got yeah, funny Carp on Arrow, which I'm happy. Which the season seemed to be the theme of. You didn't tell me the truth, but I'm trying to protect you. And oh, I stopped watching me. Arrow after season two, man. I couldn't couldn't handle that. <laughs> they kept doing the same thing over it's and over. It's always again. like I have sad eyes. I am. The Arrow. <laughs> Should I kill people or not? I don't know. I have to struggle with it. Behind blue eyes. Let's do a reintroduction of your character there. What's the Snacks do? Snacks is a arcanist of the uh, broken type. His specialist is a Fireball. He is a white mage. And he likes chucking fireballs and eating down on food. And most of the time, he's eating down on food while the teammates do all the work. Yeah. Am, I, am I wrong? <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. You can catch Dom on some of our other fan programs, like 
you in. Shackle. Shackle. Number. Oh, Plunder and Peril. Yeah, that's another game that hasn't met for a month. Yep. But we got it tomorrow. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. It's happening, guys. I'm hype as fuck. Yeah, because we're playing to the role-playing part. Yeah, that. Maybe I'm just hyped because Dan's character died. <laughs> what doesn't Dan die? That was some le like that was some MAGA shocking grass shit right there. He didn't even have to fight it. He could have just let me handle it, but no. <laughs> I'm immune to electricity. Oh man. And I murdered somebody's brother, and she's gonna come back and kill me with her halfling family. Yeah. All right, Eric. How are you doing? You're in some of my other shows too. Rain of Winter. Yeah. Bam, nailed it. Yes. I, for the first week, I managed to not die. So, the first out of three weeks say, where I did not have to roll a new character. Would you say that you caused the death of another character? Because I got a ton of comments about that. Everyone was like, I can't believe he did put the rifle down. Uh, <laughs> I gotta watch this I now. Didn't, I didn't put the rifle down, but let's be honest here. Knowing what we know about that the people in that lodge hey, I don't think it would have saved us whoa the audience has its own opinion friend I hesitate to say this but can you reintroduce Breck to the audience I'm well, a headache right now knowing that this janky monster <laughs> <laughs> so Breck is a uh, human he's a uh Cavalier and then a Golden Legionnaire. And his entire purpose in life is making sure that other people in his party don't die. Um, and he tends to be pretty effective at that. And he rides his uh, loyal Griffin Skirms. Good to have a Griffin. Kai, how have you been in the four hours since uh, you got done shooting a bunch of people in the face and causing their insides to explode? I've been doing very well, and I'm really excited that we finally get to do this again. Yeah. It's been so long. You know, you know what? I was talking to Dave, who's Henley from the other program, and he was like, Kai seems like a sociopath. <laughs> And I was like, nah, he's cool. He's like, what kind of character does he play in other games? I was like, oh, he rides a T-Rex. He's like, he rides a T-Rex. I was like, yeah, that's a thing in Pathfinder. He's like, he rides a T-Rex. I was like, yeah, Maybe. that's a thing. Maybe Dan needs to start riding some T-Rexes. I'm not a sociopath. I'm not a sociopath. All my characters are designed to be sociopaths. Of course. Oh, no, no. Aster's a diplomat. Well, think Speaking about of, Let's hear about Aster. Aster's the... Uh, cleric of the party and also one of the damaged DRs now who rides T-Rex into battle and <laughs> just, just crushes everyone in sight. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. If Ke I mean, if he doesn't kill people, I'll be out of a job. All That's right. how the doctor sees it. <laughs> Anosh, thank you for hey. waking up earlier and earlier to deal with us <laughs> Americans. <laughs> How are yeah. you doing over there, man? Yeah, I'm good, man. Just been really busy with work and stuff. Actually, it's gonna be a really interesting session where I think everyone forgets what has forgotten what their characters can do. That's right. Yeah, man. The introduction. Yeah, train. He's an archer. He rides this awesome cat, battle cat. Wait, why am I in melee range? Shit! Like you know. Yeah. I <laughs> forgot to get out the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Train's uh, basically, he's a hunter, he's, and uh, by profession, uh, he's a bounty hunter in the, in the game, and he has this really cool tiger called Battlecat that he rides around, who saves his life, and who whines when he dies and tries to fight on. That happened. A few times. Yeah. Kroama, we've come to you now. I finished eating something. How was your kingmaker, by the way? I was able to have fun playing a Lenorm. Oh. <laughs> Did you actually like role play the Lenorm? Like, you know, no, no, no. As in, I, I was able to control the Lenorm. Yeah. And oh, wreck phase. 
I feel like they should have more monsters like Lenore. Like when you kill them, they leave a curse on you. Yeah, yeah, like, I agree. Oh I god, I'm dying! Yeah. That should happen all the time. Curse of kind. Kill an ant. I'm cursed! How have you been over these last few weeks? Because I think you're the only person I haven't talked to, Karama. Yeah. Uh, eh. Time's been passing. Groups of uh, skulls and shackles grouping together in my public, in my actual area, so. You gonna get in on that? I have, a little bit. Excellent. Probably made my little. That first blow. book's pretty rough. Better watch your step. Yeah. We're halfway through. I got my little blowgun halfling. <laughs> not very, oh, not very good. It it may it doesn't sound like it's very mechanically effective, but it does sound like it'd be awesome to play. It is. <laughs> like odd and job. It, <clears throat> but uh Gekido himself hasn't ever really changed much. He's always just been a little uh tiny fox that uh burrows through people. <laughs> so that's what he's been since the beginning that's what he is now it's just things change like now he can fly in a straight line as a charge <laughs> once per rage <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yes I am a pouncing raging fox that's all it is good stuff it is a pleasure to meet all of you again yes we have been on a, quite a long vacation yeah, I like the idea that you guys have just been like vacationing in the middle of the Echo Wood for like a month. No, we've been at the farm. The apple farm. Oh, right. Some <laughs> of you have actually purchased your own lots of land, though. So. And we're dealing with this massive gone, drought, man. right? Trying to get water for almond plants. And taking up side jobs with the silver foxes. Yeah, so let's talk about the silver foxes, right? Gekido is basically like the silver fox mascot. This is the not... resistance group in this city full of Hell Knights. The Hell Knights just showed up and took over the town and were like, listen to us. And now the populace is rising up. If you'll remember, Aster is on a list, and that list has his face on it. And they don't let him go anywhere without a military escort. Because he's so... He's just so grimy. Oh. I do not know why they use me as mascot. I'm not even Silver Fox. My fur is orange. Yeah. Uh-oh, we lost Tom. Get. No. Uh, see, it's over. <laughs> when we got back together, maybe we'll come back next week. Game's over. <laughs> oh! I knew this would happen. All right, let's just play Stars Without Numbers then. Okay. Really? You just want to have everybody play Stars Without Numbers now? Yes. <laughs> let's just do that. Sure, whatever. Oh, if we're going to a default game, we are totally going to uh, Pendragon. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah, we got some Pendragon rep from the creator. Just announced that right there. Bam, Greg Stafford. Damn it, Dom, answer the phone! I know you can't hear me if I shout louder, but... <laughs> Pick up the damn phone. Oh... Boy, sorry, folks at home, especially you YouTubers, because you gotta like sit here and wait for us. Breck, your plus two goes to hit damage and saves. <sighs> All right, yeah, guys. That's what he said. I think we might have to hang up the call and restart it. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, friends at home, sorry about this. We got, you know, technical difficulties. Uh, What's up? Does your, uh, does your tactician ability go to hit damage and saves? What was that? Your, your ability goes to hit damage and saves, right? Nothing else? 
Correct. Okay. So it's now at a plus two when I... Well, the bonus doesn't matter because I my macros are built into it. So if it changes, I can just change it. Mm -hmm. Are you using one of those new advanced macro, macro uh, templates? Uh, actually... Yeah, look at them templates. Mmm, template-tastic. Oh my gosh, we can't get Dom in here. Super frustrating. I mean, he was just playing a full game with you earlier, right? Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Not great. No, oh, I'm going to go get some water while you get to deal with that. Awesome. Oh, we got Dom. Yeah. Screw you, Eric. <laughs> Sit your ass back down. We're starting. <laughs> you try to walk away. You try to walk away on me. We're starting this. It's happening now. <laughs> it's always this time slot, too. I don't get it. All right. like, early today is working fine, but now it's like... Screw talking about Silver Foxes. Here's the mission intro. 10,000 years ago, the Prince Nur Athman, a powerful archmage and secret devotee of the demon lord Abraxas, attempted to seize the throne of the Aslan by replacing influential nobles with clockwork automatons and simulacrums loyal to him. His sinister design was foiled by the Knights of the Ayun Star, a powerful order sworn to protect the prophecies of rightful imperial secession. The knights exposed both Nur Athman's artificial aristocracy and his devotion to Abraxas, but before they could capture him and bring him to trial before the throne of glass, evil prince made his escape. Because Nur Athman was of noble blood and still commanded formidable allies among Aslan's elite, the empire did not closely press the search for the evil prince. Nur Athman vanished with his followers into the deep forest of primitive Avistan, disappearing from Aslanti affairs. But the Archmage was not about to forget his defeat and the humiliation he had suffered. So your party's back together after a month. We're going to zoom past all the role-playing bullshit just so we can finish this before Dom Kiss disconnects again. Oh no. Hey. <laughs> if you'll remember... Which you may or may not, you defeated some skeleton guy on the last level, and there was a platform, and it acted like an elevator. The elevator disc comes to rest at the bottom of a shaft after an incredibly long descent. It took about three months to get here. <laughs> here, wide stairs descend to a broad foyer. Two huge stone double doors are at the far end of the room. An ancient inscription is chiseled into them. Arches to the east and west reveal side halls, flanking into one of the leading doors. A red light flickers in the darkness beyond the western arch. What would you guys like to do? <sighs> okay. This is the part where I run around the room, yes? Do what you want. Yes. So, first step. Proceed cautiously. Well, the thing about porn, though, is <laughs> apparently snacks takes like two minutes to cast a ton of spells. Oh, give me magic! It is. Steven, I think your mic is open. Yes. Sorry. Uh, you're a, you're a cleric, right? Um, Aster? No, no, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't stack that well with me. There is a, something over here, yes. Yes, okay. As you move into that corner of the room, the lighting changes from clear to red. At the end of the short hall stands an armored Aslanti woman. Her left hand holds a thin, curved longsword aloft. Her right hand has a star-shaped depression in the center of an open palm. A star-shaped crystal is embedded in the depression that emits flickering, erratic red light. You can make a knowledge history check to learn more. 
There is also a corpse of a woman in mustard-colored robes that lies near the western statue. She mm. appears to be the same woman you saw several layers earlier in the, uh, the serpent's den. If you remember, there was someone who was changing shape to a form similar th to this. Snacks, you identify the figure on the left as one of the Knights of the Ayun Star. You know that this order is closely associated with the Aslanti Emperor. You speak Aslanti. Mm, I don't, but I can usually want to comprehend language, too. Does anyone speak Aslanti? Um. No. Okay. Looks like I'm using the wand. I cast the wand of comprehend language. Okay. <clears throat> Read to me. One second. Still solving some problems here. Breck, you yes. notice that there is a trap on the door directly in front of you. Okay. The stone double doors. So next, you cast Comprehend Languages. At the base of the Western statue, you read, Dedicated to the brave sacrifice of Lady Estrakhan of Almoraine Blue, Knight Commandant of the Western Star. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Did anybody say there's a trap over there? Uh, so, I... Wreck, as soon as he notices, will, in his usual command, say, Careful, men. There's a trap on the door. I'm not sure I can identify it personally, but perhaps you might. I detect magic on it. Okay. When you detect magic... The two statues and the door all detect with the same magical emanation. Mm. Can you make a spellcraft check? Yes, I can. What's my spellcraft? All three of these are traps that are set to cast a spell, Slay Living. Oh, Ooh. shit. Well, we have an so. idea of what happened to her. Does our perception check give us any idea of what the trigger is? I don't believe so. Let me see. Yeah, Trina is also going to try and look at it. He cast so, for example, magic. you know the trigger is the socket in the hand where the woman has the iron stone currently. There's a trigger there and a trigger in the hand of the other one. So, does a perception check tell me if we just battered down the door and didn't bother with those things, whether or not we would set off the trap? You would not set off the trap in that case. The doors seem to be made of a reinforced material. There is also, now that you're looking closely, there's writing on the middle doors. Mention it to Snacks now that he can actually read stuff. I read it. Okay. You're probably too far back to read it, Snacks. Perhaps you'd like to move closer. <laughs> Alright. I read it now? Lies the doom of Nur Athman. Disturb not his evil works. Muse not on his forbidden secrets. Turn away and let the great pretender fade from the record of history. It's written in small lettering dozens of times over the doors. Hmm. Question Can I reach the uh, magical traps and try to disable them? Yes. Okay. I tell everybody what to is back. the range on uh, Slay Living? It is touch. So if you were doing it from range and it went off, it wouldn't hurt you, right? That's I imagine it would probably still, because it's like you're interacting with it through magic. It maybe it may, comes to you. I don't know. No. Nope. Oh. Well, I took spells and put magical items into doing this, so I will try to disable the device. Uh, would I need to stand to disable the first one? 
how far can you reach? Uh, I could technically do it from 15 foot away, but you know. Okay, you would need to to disable the left hand one. You need to stand there, I think, right? Because that's going to get you to the hand. Okay. Here we go. First disabled device. Anybody got a guidance? Yes. <laughs> Trade on cost guidance on me. Be careful when you do it. Do you yes. actually have disabled device, or do you need to cast that Aramzay's? Yeah, I have to cast the uh, spell from the uh, book. Okay. Aramzay's right. focus. Okay.